lots of prophetic revelation today, and prescriptions from heaven. You're having coffee with Conrad on Conrad Rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad at ConradRocks.net. Rocks of Revelation being poured out to you. God bless you. Yeah, Radio Air Jesus, what's up? Yeah, got the flag in last week. Um, You could get them. I bought them for $9 on eBay, and I was so stoked to get it in. It's a prophetic revelation of we we need to appeal to heaven right now. For uh, our country. George Washington flew this flag with his secret navy. And I had a vision back in a, in a, in a church a few months ago. I saw this tree, right? This tree. And I'm like, I didn't know about this flag. I didn't know anything about it. And uh, so I'm like, Lord, is this the Christmas tree? Because I got my, you know, I got the thing against the Jeremiah 10 Christmas tree. So I... Uh, you know, I'm like, Lord, I don't want to see that. What are you showing me? You know, the very next day I saw this flag in a Facebook post by Nancy Petrie. Then I learned the history of this flag. And uh, uh, it comes from a, a quote from John Locke, actually. Um, you know, we need to appeal to heaven. A uh, lot of history in it. You can do some research. It rocks for Jesus. Shout out to Radio Air Jesus. And um, yeah, lots of prophetic stuff's going on. I was talking to Susan this morning. In this podcast, I may have to cut into two uh, because I got to go do some. We're doing some outreach this morning, so I got to go. But anyway, um, we were talking this morning. There is lots of prophetic stuff going on right now. Tons. I mean, it's all coming to a head, which can mean that something big is about to happen. Um, you know, if you if you study the stuff that Jonathan Kahn's putting out about the Shemitah year, that is worth your investigation. If you're lazy, you can press some, some YouTube videos, just press play and go, Oh, let your mind be blown by the prophetic revelation that's coming out from Jonathan Kahn. Just look at the, um, mystery of the Shemitah, right? And also the Harbinger, you know, just look at a few of those videos and, and out of all the alarmist type books that have been coming out since the last 30 years or so, this one's got this one's got some meat in it. I mean, there's some there's some historical uh, precedents statistically. You know, it's it's there's stuff happening on these dates. Stock market crashes, the attack of the towers, and it does happen in these cycles. And you're sitting and you're watching these people actually say, quote the Bible. And, and, you know, it's in Isaiah, and you're like, oh, man, they're prophesying doom, just like the Scripture says. And I'm, I'm like, blown away. Now, I've uh, Clay Nash, this morning, uh, the morning I'm recording this is July 16th, he had a portal coming down. Dude, a few weeks ago, I was in church, and I'm sitting in about the fifth row, and I see a portal come down right there in the front, uh, right there in front of the pulpit in the in the front, and I found out later that people pray in a circle there. We and, and after that, I started praying in a circle with people. Dude, the circles is a huge revelation that's coming out right now. I've had circles. You know, they had uh, 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 in Numbers two, I believe, that people encamped around the tabernacle, each by their banner, right? Each by their perspective banner. The tribes of Israel in a circle, and then we worship around the throne in a circle. Right. So the last week, and I've been talking about this uh, since 2002, but uh, uh, when we were with Kingdom Grind Music, we were, you know, there's a few of us grabbing hands to pray in a little circle. And in this little bitty circle, before we even started praying, yo, this is prophetic. It grew. I mean, there's like 30 or 40 people in the circle before we began to pray. We'd look up and people were coming in and, and uh, Ryan's like, hey, come on in, brother. Let's pray. And it was an awesome time. The several words coming around right now. Ryan Lestrange is talking about it. Uh, stoking the fires of revival. I was on a prayer walk a few weeks ago, and I saw in the darkness, in the darkness, um, fires and bonfires. And I went over this in one of my podcasts earlier. You just got to catch them, ConradRocks.net. 
And then I saw as we went, we were stoking the the fires of these different bonfires in the darkness. So I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, one of the things that this means, yes, it's awesome. The We're coming together, burning our iniquities, repenting, lighting a fire. But that's when the devil comes too. You know, it's spiritual warfare. And the prince of darkness, you know, these are fires in the darkness. America is in a dark place right now. And when you start lifting up the name of Jesus and worshiping, it's like lighting a fire in the darkness. And he goes, oh, there you go. And so some of the things, do not consider it strange, these fiery trials that are coming upon you right now. I get this, too. You know, there's a scripture somewhere, the snake bites the heels of the horse in order to throw off the rider. So if you have, um, as I was praying before this podcast, I see that people are trying to reach out in the spirit. They're, 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 um, they're trying to um, do things. You reach out into the Spirit and see what the prophetic future is. But you've got to be grounded in the Word. Notice that in this darkness, okay, thy Word is a lamp unto thy feet and a light unto thy path. you got to know the Word. And when the Spirit and the Word agree, they converge, right? They converge, and you're like, hey, this is lighting up my path, amen? And guess what? That path ain't just for you to stand there. It's for you to walk it out, you know, who walk after the Spirit, <laughs> There's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but walk after the Spirit. You can't sit on your couch right now. I'm wearing a fish shirt, and I was putting on, I'm like, Lord, why why am I wearing this fish shirt? Because we're about to do some big fishing, yo. There's some big fishing coming in pretty soon. Um, Something, if you have not caught this Sea of Red revolution, if you have not caught it, man, there's, there's a lot. After the Supreme Court of the United States, SCOTUS, decision a lot of people woke up and they're like oh my gosh i've been watching tv click 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 being informed being programmed by the devil and i woke oh i've lost my country you know so we got to appeal to heaven this sea of red a lot of people are superimposing um their the red cross you know the blood of jesus over their face through these um photo apps that you can find on apple and android i'm trying to think of it I talk about it in an earlier podcast. Also, you know, I've been hearing recently, too, um, I, I was in a worship service at our, our Fellowship Christian Church in Houston, and I heard Lengthen Thy Cords. Like yesterday's podcast, I did a podcast in the car, because this is like emergency revelation i got to get out. That's playing today, uh, July 16th. But I'm like, man, i got to get this podcast out in the car. Photo Blend, thank you, David Smithy. Rocks for Jesus. Anyway... So there's a, 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 a sea of red coming out. Oh, yeah. Podcast in the car. Oh, yeah. I heard in the spirit very clearly, lengthen thy cords, and it went back to that Isaiah 54 prophecy. Oh, man. This rocks for Jesus. And it, it's it's not for, um, it's not, uh, I think a lot of people misappropriate this word for selfish lust, to be quite honest. But, man, I mean... Dude, this is for the church. Sing, O barren thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing, and cry aloud thou that did not travail with child for more of the children of the desolate than the children of Mary, wife, saith the Lord. Now, these are the people that aren't giving birth, you know, um, physically. But Timothy said, Onesimus, whom I begotten in my chains. He begot, Timothy was his spiritual son, okay? Jesus says, you know, you're, if you forsake family, fathers, mothers, lands, cars, and RVs, you know, you're going to inherit manyfold in this lifetime. So we come into the kingdom. We come into the church. And then here's the verse I heard. I hear a few words, and then I go look it up, because the Spirit and the Word agree. You know, the sword of the Spirit's the Word of God. So the Spirit touches the Word. He lights. Remember, Jesus came out of the water. The Word comes out of the water, and the Holy Spirit lighted upon the Word. That's the rhema right now word for the moment. Amen. It said, um, the Spirit said, enlarge the place of thy tent and stretch forth the curtain. So then I looked up the rest, and it says, of thine habitation, spare not, lengthen the cords, and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Right now, this sea of red revolution is coming. It's coming right now, right? And I'm just like... Wow, if you're not if you don't see this, you're not paying attention. There are people with questions right now, and you need we are the priest of the believer. We need to have we need to reach out. Right now is the time of salvation. You know, don't sit on the couch. 
and lose these people. We lost them several times before. We lost, <laughs> we lost them in the 60s when the hippies came in, right? And uh, they're looking for truth. And, well, they didn't look too good, so we let, didn't let them in the church, remember? And then, you know, there's other times, 1996, when the pulpit split. I'm always talking about this. Um, Tommy Tenney wrote a good book, and everybody goes, oh, this is a cute book, The God Chasers, but did nothing with it. Then in uh, when the Twin Towers fell on the Shemitah in 2011, amen, uh, 2001, on 9-11, they came into the church for two weeks, and then we look like the church, we look like the world, smell like the world, walk like the world, talk like the world. Whereas there's no difference. There's no power in the church right now. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not a person walking after signs and wonders, but signs and wonders should be walking after me, man. You know, they follow them that believe. Jesus promised that. So right now is when this stuff is happening. Um, and I'm getting many emails. A lot of you guys are emailing me, sending me messages. There's some in the prophetic community. Um, thanks for the hearts. Yo! Uh, many, lots of uh, posts in the prophetic community, and I'm getting a lot of messages about rainbows in the dreams. And destruction, so, hello. I'm still praying about those. Yesterday, as we were coming up, as we were coming up from uh, Texas, man, I was driving north. You know, we, we took a, the Jesus hashtag sign right there at the Mississippi um, state line, and uh, we, we lifted up the name of Jesus in Mississippi. And, you know, driving north, man, I see this Egyptian obelisk. There's an Egyptian obelisk as we're going north, and I'm like, Susan, out of all the out of all the art that could be on this 55 freeway, there is an Egyptian obelisk on the way to Memphis, which is a city in Egypt, which has a big pyramid. <laughs> you know, can you not see the prophetic implications, the prophetic stuff that's going on right now? And uh, you know, just so you guys know, Washington D.C. If you check out the streets. It was formed in the shape of a pentagram. And then there's an Egyptian obelisk, a Washington monument. Hello? I mean, come on. There's there's prophetic stuff going on. And a lot of people are writing it off as, oh, that's nothing. It's just a it's just a Egyptian obelisk. <laughs> I mean, there's prophetic stuff going on. So uh pastor's been talking a lot about coming out of Egypt and then going back to Egypt to to w- witness for the Lord after he had the prescription. And if I have time, I'm going to be talking about the prescription. Um, Moses left Egypt. He was there 40 years. He left. And then, you know, they said, here's an Egyptian. He was born a Hebrew, but he looked Egyptian. The girls that he was... Um, Hanging out with her goes, well, there's an Egyptian. Well, it took 40 years to get Egypt out of him. And then he was sent back after he lost all of his pride. He, all of his pride was crucified. And, uh, you know, he even fought that call that he had earlier in his life. He even fought it. He's like, I don't want to do this. I can't talk and all that stuff. Then he goes back into Egypt. Well, the prophetic thing that's happening here, and the reason Susan and I are here is there's a big if, and I did I did a show with Tina Tatum about this um, before Exalt Jesus Memphis, I believe, and uh, we were talking about this appeal to heaven flag. If you want to check it out, just just do a search for Tina Tatum on uh, ConradRocks.net. There's a search bar in the lower right, and we talk about that. But in Second Chronicles seven fourteen, if my people who are called by my name, I'm going to look it up, and, and I'm always talking about this. But there's an if in this word that is key. And I've been noticing that some of the prophetic words that we've been getting recently can go either way. It's up to us. It's up to us. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and will heal their land. There's an if. And it means we've got to do something. The word that lights up our path. You know, we have to walk this out. We have to go from lukewarm past the word if to doing something. If we sit on our couch, we're going to lose our country. Amen. If we can't sit on our couch and watch American Idol, I was listening today. I will not, you know, putting the stumbling block of iniquity before their eyes. I'm telling you, that's in Ezekiel. Where a lot of us are putting, willfully putting the stumbling block of the of our iniquity in front of our eyes and watching it rather than the Word of God. So there's this big if. 
we've got to go from lukewarm. We've got to go from being complacent. We've got to humble ourselves and pray and seek God. And this, there's a spiritual thing going on. Uh, I talk about a vision, too, about the shovel digging the dirt, and there's a spiritual pipe thing. We're going to try to carnally figure this out. This is just what we do. We're carnal creatures for the most part, and we try to reason. We try to figure out how can we save our country. It ain't going to happen this way. This is a spiritual problem. We need to humble and pray. Now, the to continue the, the prophetic revelation, the reason Susan and I are here, we believe that there's going to be a, a revival in this area if... So we've got to stoke the flames of the lukewarm. You've got to do something. Jesus, hashtag Jesus, right? We've got to get people asking questions. We, we're, uh, the priesthood is in the hands of every believer. If you, are, if you believe Jesus, the signs should be following you. The signs that he says follows the believer. Them that believe, these signs will follow him. So, you know, I'm, I'm saying you are where you are for a reason. There's no reason for us to live around 50 Christians and then go to different churches for 30 minutes a week and come back and not even know our neighbor even after that. You know, your neighborhood, do prayer walks and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a big if. And for some, we moved down south, right, because there's uh, there's this huge religious principality over the city of Memphis. It's, it's amazing. It's kind of like if you ever flew into L.A., and L.A. is an easy one. It, you fly in, and you, you see the pea soup as you're going. I mean, seriously, the smog. It's like this pea soup, and you open the doors, and you walk around. There's this spirit. It's it's like uh, there's not even a church for 20 miles. I mean, drive around. There's like no churches, but there's this huge principality that you can almost you feel, you sense, you know. And as you get out of Memphis, there, there's this religious principality over Memphis. And as we... The drive out, then the spirit-filled churches are, are there. So we believe that revival is going to break out in this area where we are. And something about Olive Branch, I keep seeing Olive Branch. Uh, Damon Thomas, I think, prophesied that it's going to go from Olive Branch, which Olive Branch represents Israel, right? There's one on our dollar bill. <laughs> I mean, you know, and it's going to reach through to Memphis. So, um, yeah, and then as I was going south one day, and I keep talking about pockets. You know, Clay Nash had his portal of, uh, today on his Facebook post, and I've been seeing that for a while. Um, as you get in this geographic location, there's this prophetic revelation, these portals that happen. And I was driving south one day, and, uh, dude, seriously, I saw dunging around the tree for one more year. And there's that parable that I believe is a word for right here where we are. A certain man had a fig tree in his vineyard and came and sought fruit thereon and found none. And I'm going to equate this with the right now rhema word where the spirit touches the word for Memphis. Then he said to the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down, why cumbereth it the ground? In answering, he said, let it alone also till I shall dig about it and dung it, and if it bear fruit well, and if not, then after that shall cut it down. So, you know, I'm not doom and gloom, but that's the word I got driving south. So we got to dung around the tree. So it's up to us around Memphis to get on fire for Jesus, to stoke those fires for revival, and then go back. So that's super-duper prophetic show today. This is Jenny Reese Clark coming to you live on Coffee with Conrad. Catch my new novel, Field of Influence, and the inspiring ministry work we're doing on the Spencer Project. Hey, I've got an idea. Let's get connected on social media at JennyReeseClark.com and don't forget, ConradRocks.net. Thank you for visiting ConradRocks.net. Conrad Rocks is supported by people just like you. If you've been blessed by Conrad Rocks, please prayerfully consider giving an offering. You can conveniently do so by using the Contribute button on the sidebar at conradrocks.net. Regular contributors get a spot on the Conrad's Comrades page, which links back to the blog or social media of your choice. You can also help Conrad Rocks by sharing your favorite posts on Facebook. Thanks again for being a part of Conrad Rocks. Remember... Jesus rules. Yeah.
that is higher than I I did this podcast, I was praying, and I saw people reaching into the darkness when they need the light, and they're looking for spiritual answers, but you got to be well-grounded in the Word, man. you got to be well-grounded in the Word. And I'm just going to talk about it a little bit. It's about heavenly prescriptions. When, when, when you go to the doctor... To solve the problem, he prescribes something. Then you do what he prescribes, right? Then you get the expected result. Faith is evidence. So when you're in this mode of being sick or whatever, you, there's a void that needs to be filled. You need a miracle. You need an answer. You look to the prescription, which is in Scripture, right? And... You apply it, especially, especially if you have a rhema word where the Spirit goes, this is the one to use. This is the sword of the Spirit. It's the sword of the Spirit. It's how you do warfare. You can read Scripture carnally, or you can read it through the illumination of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, which will guide you into all truth. So I was praying about that, and I see a lot of people saying, I declare and decree. And I can see that a lot of people are getting that from the book of Job, where... Uh, the Tishbite, not not the one. Um, it's not. <laughs> hold on, let me read. Let me read Job forty two seven um, because people are kind of going, oh well, it's in scripture. Eliphaz the Temanite says it in chapter twenty two, if I'm right. But it, but the but the big point I want to say is this: it was not Job saying this. It may have been in the book of Job, and I hear many people say, Job said it. Well, Job didn't say it. Read who was speaking. It was Eliphaz the Temanite. And then Eliphaz is rebuked by the Lord God in Scripture, okay? And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends, for you've not spoken to me that thing is right as my servant Job has. So, you know, there's this whole thing, there's books being sold, there's all sorts of I declare and decree, When I, and the fruits of it is not, you're not always hearing from the Spirit. That's why I'm talking about heavenly prescriptions. We need a heavenly prescription. We need to appeal to heaven. He gives us the answer. We walk it out. And the, the, the passage I want you to meditate on today in addition to the stuff I've been talking about, is Daniel 1. And I'm like going, whoa, what's this got to do with a heavenly prescription, Lord? Well, it's got a lot to do. In the third year of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. And the Lord Jehoiakim gave king of Judah into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried to the land of Shinar. Anyway, this is the passage where Daniel... Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah are eunuchs, and they've, they're given Babylonian names, and they're told to eat something. But see, in, in verse 8, it says, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. So Daniel here, they're wanting him to eat the food of the world. They're wanting him to consume things that Scripture says not to consume. Daniel was, be ye separate. He was holy. But where did he get this, I'm not going to defile myself? He got it from the Scriptures. Amen? 
He got it from Scripture. So he stood on that word. And if you continue, and, and let me tell you what the other one, the, the, his boss, uh, the prince of the eunuchs, I fear my lord the king, who hath appointed your meat and your drink, why you should see your fa- faces worse liking than the children which you are of sort, then shall you make me endanger my head to the king. This is in verse 110. So his boss, which is of the world, you know, this is like us Christians in America, you got these principalities and powers, they're worldly, they're not of God at all, they don't care about the scripture, they're using their carnal representation, the way they sort to reality is worldly things, and he thinks that, oh, this is how you do things. He thinks he's doing the right thing. This is something right in his own eyes, but is not prescribed from heaven, see? It's a worldly prescription that leads to death, all right? So this is that guy's interpretation. He, this is that guy's way, and he, he fears the king. He doesn't fear God. He fears Nebuchadnezzar. So who do you fear? If you fear God, you'll do what God says, the heavenly prescription. right? So then uh, it goes on. He says, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee ten days, and let us give pulse to eat and water to drink. That's, that's chopped up vegetables. So, Christians, you're going to be put to the test. Things are going to happen that you're going to have to say, look, am I going to go with the world or am I going to go with the word? The world or the word? Just one letter missing L and it stands for lie. (laughs) Okay, so world or the word? So he's tested and it turns out that he proves himself to be fairer and flatter than flesh by following the word of God, the heavenly prescription. So today, as we're going throughout our life, you know, let's follow the word of God. And a lot of us are eager to be in the prophetic, but we're not grounded in the word. Amen. So get the word in you. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. Amen. I got some stuff to do, so we're going to do a little bit of outreach today, I think. God bless you. for Thank you for being in my life. Uh, If this has touched you, I've got a support page at ConradRocks.net. Please consider sharing these as well. Uh, I'm doing this one live on, what's this called again? Periscope. (laughs) Yeah, I'm Most Radical Man on Periscope. And yeah, every once in a while I'll do these live so you can follow me on Twitter. Most Radical Man on Twitter. You can check out my Periscope there as well. That's amazing. Lord, I thank you that people are uh, searching for you diligently, Lord. And Lord, I thank you that we realize that when the snake bites the heels of the horse, that it's Satan trying to throw off the rider. Lord, I thank you that the course that you've set before us, I hear two words right now, no man putting a hand a hand to the plow looking back is fit for the kingdom of heaven in Philippians 3.13. I forget those things that are behind, but reach forward. That's the reaching forward that I see for the upward call. Lord, I thank you that the people that are listening to this podcast, watching this periscope, that they're reaching forward. Lord, I pray in agreement with them, because I'm sure they're going to agree, that you give them the rocks of revelation, you give them the words, the rhema and the logos words, to light up their path. And I'm also hearing, in it you shall have good success. I believe that's Joshua 1.8. Let me read that. <laughs> Amen. This book of the law shall not depart from thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. For thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So, you know, get the word in you. Eat the word, drink the word, speak the word, meditate on the word, and then you will have good success. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of my life. Remember to share these on your social media sites. Till we meet again, dig deeper. 
and go higher. Hi, this is John from John's Java House. This is the kid Renegade Redeemed with Forever Redeemed Ministries. This is Tiffany White with Hey Ministries. This is Dan the Coffee Man. This is Glenda Linkus from WingsOfProphecy.com. Jill Dyson from Angel Street Ministry. This is Just Take Up Ministry for Women. This is Marianne Sansom from Google Plus. This is Charles Michael from France. With Inspiration Ministries. Chrissy and Mike on the Stander for the Lord. This is Janet with Overcoming Abuse God's Way. Spreading-joy.org. This is Gerald Thomas in New Hebron, Mississippi. This is the Mordecai from Oklahoma. This is Vicki at Michael's House of New Beginnings. This is Stephen Barrett from Holy Fire, Japan. We are Andy Coffee with Conrad. Yeah.